In part two of our introduction to the Difference Inclusive Leadership course, Paul Johnson, a head teacher from Churchill College in Walls End, North Tyneside, outlines key learning he took from the course and shares some examples of implementation and impact in his school. We were already really aware at the start of the year um, that inclusion was going to be a key priority for us at, at Churchill. Um, you know, obviously our demographic um, is quite highly disadvantaged and um, we, uh, you know, we'd also kind of seen a lot of the impact beginning to emerge around the pandem pandemic. So um, we, we had a new Senko in place as, as an assistant head uh, and we were keen to kind of um, develop the sort of support we're providing for students, particularly with their SEMH. Um, and 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 as we were also seeing not just students with diagnosed SEMH um, or, or an SENK, um, but we were also really starting to see the impact of the pandemic on behaviour and attitudes uh, of, of significant numbers of students. I think we all have um, who've been affected through the pandemic and and the, the lockdowns that we've had. Um, I'd actually had the course recommended um, by me by two completely independent and, and unconnected people from other parts of the country. Um, and so after much deliberation, we, we kind of signed, signed up. Um, as Sean mentioned, we've, we've done four of the six sessions so far. And what we found is that the sessions of, um, for us had a, had a really good mix of developing our understanding of the research and the sort of approaches that underpin inclusive practice and uh, the ones that Sean was showing a, min a minute ago. Um, but it's also kind of provided those practical reflection tools which have allowed us to, to sort of analyze our current systems um, and practice, whether that's on a personal level and, and also, I guess, on a school-wide level. It's meant that it's highlighted um, through the course, hi highlighted examples of what good practice might look like, but actually with the other attendees um, who, um, who are coming from a range of different schools, it's given us lots of opportunities to sort of share our experiences and ideas with each other. So, as I say, we're about two thirds of the way through, but already, you know, although we weren't anticipating making wholesale changes really this year, because it's about kind of preparing for next year, it has actually already done a lot. And we've started to see some of the impact on it really from quite early on. Um, it's done a lot around challenging our and, and influencing, I suppose, our thinking about our systems and how our systems and our, our practice actually interact. We reviewed our behaviour system back in December, following uh, attending um, the, the first uh, session or first couple of sessions of the of the course, and, and actually already within that, we we thought really carefully about how we could create a system um, that also interacted and, and promoted and and facilitated improving the practice of staff. Uh, so we we redeveloped our internal exclusion uh, to be staffed by someone who's who's really good at relational practice. Um, and put our middle leaders on a rotor there to support in there, um, to support him uh, and, and students that are in there. So they could almost kind of watch and learn um, from somebody who has really strong relational practice. And that's in itself generated lots and lots of discussions and reflections with middle leaders about their practice and that of members of their department. So what it's done is, is prompted a lot of uh, discussions at, at a leadership level around, uh, around this issue. Um, we've also kind of introduced some steps into the consequence system that, that we developed um, when we reviewed the, the, the behaviour system. And we actually explicitly sort of built in and created space to promote and support practice development off the back of um, what we've been learning about in the course, um, particularly around building on positive interactions with students, not just following it steps in, the, in, in a system. And that's actually made a significant difference in relationships in the classroom. Staff have, have told us that. And the data certainly suggests that as well. The number of children removed from lessons on a weekly basis has, has roughly halved. Um, and, you know, that's had, had significant improvements on in-class behaviour. Um, I think the principles around the, the trauma-informed practice, particularly, um, one of the things that, that came through to us particularly was how great a proportion of trauma is actually unseen. Um, so, you know, we know that we get an awful lot of referrals and, and we're aware of a lot of things, but actually one of the, the, the focuses around the course is that there's an awful lot that we won't see and won't be aware of, but that actually, as Sean was saying, it is quite normal. It isn't normal to have no issues at all. Um, and one of the, the models that that is shared as part of the course is the PANCSEP model, which um, has, has really kind of provided us, I suppose, with a clear language to describe a student's behaviour and the response as well of a member of staff. And that's kind of really helped us uh, analyse our own um, interactions as, as well as other people's. And it's um, affected how we've 
as attendees approach conversations with students um so the sort of words we use the body language etc but it's also alongside the sort of bias awareness and, and asset-based practice um it, all of that is going to be one of our key school priorities next academic year and we're in the process at the moment of planning uh, to deliver extended training to all staff on on all of these areas during our training days in september and then revisit it on a regular basis throughout the year and and make it a focus of our monitoring program. And that's certainly something we, we couldn't have done had it not been for the knowledge and understanding that we've been able to build up through the course. Um, you know, we might have been able to get somebody external in for a, for a one-off um, session, um, but what the course has enabled us to do is, is do much more than that and actually be able to, to think how we can deliver it in a way that will be really specific to our school and something that we can spread over the course of, of the year, not just to do it in that one-off session, but keep revisiting because we've got the kind of background and, and, and the awareness around that. Um, so for us, it, you know, although we're still at a reasonably early stage in this, we're only two thirds of the way through the course itself. Um, it's certainly um, a key part of the uh, of our plans for, for next year and has already had a, an, an impact. And my Senko Carl has also been delivering staff training and starting to drip feed some of the things that, that we've covered as part of the course into that as well as part of whole staff training. So it's been really helpful from that point of view. And as I say, is going to have a big focus for us um, in the next academic year as well. Um, so we, we certainly found it really, really good.